The good news is Crumb was completely free of any parasites and uh, Crumb can move in to the room with the other pigeons and Crumb got to fly around today for the first time uh, fly free and I think he or she really enjoyed it. In fact uh, I kind of left them out all day in there so he could get some exercise. He seems like a very calm pigeon. Well that was the good news. But I have some very bad news too. Well I had hoped to put another video on about the baby pigeon. But something bad, something really bad happened yesterday. Um, and it had been happening, but I really didn't know what it was. It's something called crop stasis where the food does not move out of the crop and into the stomach. And he had, uh, where his crop would get big, I would feed him, and it seemed to stay big for too long a time. But then he would start going to the bathroom and be pooping out normally, and the crop would go down. And then I'd feed him again. I don't know... And I'm guessing maybe this probably is my fault. That somehow I introduced some kind of bacteria. You know, I, I didn't have all the proper tools for feeding a baby bird like this. I was using a syringe. I was boiling the water in a teapot and then putting it into a shot glass with a little mixture. I was following the directions on how to mix it. The temperature, I did not have a thermometer to be measuring the temperature. The temperature was supposed to be 102 degrees and I would just touch my finger into the mix as I mixed it, just touch it with my little finger, which was clean from being washed with soap but was not sterile. And I would feed him the mixture that was about, the mixture that, you know, it would seem to be coming out of a, of a pigeon's stomach at the temperature. So he didn't get it too hot or cold, but the, it cools off quickly in a shot glass, so I'd feed him quickly. Maybe that was the problem. Maybe the problem was it was too thin or too thick. It's very touchy with these little birds. Another thing might have been, I don't know how long he was sitting in the egg and he couldn't hatch. I just they picked up the egg just because a uh, Georgie girl had gotten off it and I was wondering why she was off it and the egg was cold the baby inside was cold um, he couldn't hatch out on his own he uh, just was in there and probably would have died in the egg I pulled the shell off of him eventually and didn't even think he'd make it through the first night because he was weak so I'm not sure if he was he completely developed or had she accidentally cracked the egg um, before? Maybe he had needed to stay in the egg another day. I don't know. 
it was a bad hatching. But I'm thinking, you know, it probably was what I did because I was no expert on feeding a, a baby like this. And um, I tried my best. Uh, he got this crop stasis yesterday and the food would not get out of his crop. And I was going to take him to the vet this morning because this morning I'm supposed to take crumb to the vet again and abort crumbs appointment and take the baby instead but uh, the crop was distended and while he was in the his little nest of t-shirts yesterday he snagged his claw on the side of the crop and he ripped a gash in it because the baby birds crops uh, when they're distended are very delicate there's is very thin 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 skin and he actually he ripped a gash in the crop and the food that was in there all gushed out and um, he had a hole in his crop and I, you can't f feed him and it's going to get infected <sighs> He started, I had him on the heat, and uh, he started to get cold, and then he started thrashing around. And I had to um, put him out of his misery because there was no way to, um, to remedy it. And I didn't want him dying slowly during the night. So it's not... Uh, the kind of video I wanted to put on. He was getting feathers in. And I, was, I hadn't named him yet really because I, I didn't know if he'd survive or not. But he was going to be two weeks old. And uh, like I said, this crop problem had been occurring. But then the crop would empty out. So I'm not sure uh, what was going on. It might have been my fault. Might have been... Uh, something that he had wrong with him. Sorry, I composed myself a little bit. You know, I've put uh, a lot of time into trying to raise this chick, but it was not something I wanted to do. I didn't want her to have uh, hatched a chick. I wanted uh, to replace the eggs. And it was my fault that the chick even existed. And like I said, I was not, I was not prepared to be taking care of a tiny chick. You know, the, the chick has to be fed every hour at first. And I did do that um, running home between work in the mornings. Um, I uh, kept him on the heating pad at a good temperature, I thought. As he got older, I shut the heating pad off on some of the days that were quite warm here because we don't have any air conditioning in the house so if the house was really warm he seemed to be really warm in the nest but when it got a little cooler I put the pad back on underneath and I'd always test it with my hand and he seemed to be doing um, pretty good and uh, he would have been two weeks old today but sometimes good is not good enough so uh, you know, I, I, I read a little bit about it and, uh, and there were instructions on the food, uh, hand feeding parrot mix about how to feed them, but there is no real, uh, instructions about exactly how much to feed except feel their crop and if it feels full then stop and wait till it empties out again. But like I say, yesterday the crop was not emptying out, um, and he was hungry because it wasn't passing into his stomach. So I don't know the food that came out. You know, it ferments in the crop if it sits in there too long, and then you get yeasts, yeast infections starting, and other bacterial things starting which could be fixed with medication, which is why I was going to get him into the vet this morning. But of course, by the time I realized what was happening, um, 
the vents are closed. So, I am. Um, his his ending came when he caught his claw on the crop. At first, he had scratched the skin. He had ripped a little layer of skin off, and I first noticed it when I saw a little blood on his uh, and his nesting area. And I'm like, "What's going on?" I was checking him all over, and then I saw that he had under his wing, his foot had ripped part of the skin, and then I, I dabbed it with a little hydrogen peroxide, but then he ripped more of it with his foot as he was moving around in the nest. And that's when he gouged a gash right in the crop and then all the food started spilling out. And it didn't really smell strange, but I'm sure it was uh, fermenting in there and just causing a problem where it couldn't pass into the stomach so sorry about this sad video I said when I started that whatever it ended up as I would put the results on and I was you know after the first couple days I was thinking well maybe he's gonna be okay but it's very touchy very touchy raising these little chicks like this you know, you can have uh, birds that eat insects and robin, baby robins eat worms. And uh, none of that's uh, sterile, of course. It's got soil clinging to it. But with the birds that eat the regurgitated food right from the mother's stomachs, like parrots and cockatiels and pigeons, um, it's, it's not so easy to feed them the proper way. And you really have to know what you're doing. And I'm saying that I'm the first to say that I knew a little bit of what I was doing, but obviously maybe not enough about what I was doing. And I was trying my best, but it didn't work. Okay, see you next time.